In this video, I'm going to do the R by C contingency table analysis described in a textbook relevant to add types and click through ratios. So, in order to do this analysis, you got to make sure that you've got your two variables corresponding to two columns of data and your data are coded according to the criteria that you specified. And in this case, we've got one trending, two purchase, three search, and we also have whether they clicked or not. So to do the analysis, click on Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and Cross Tabs, and put Add Types in your row, and click in your columns. It doesn't necessarily matter. Again, you could switch it over and you'll get the same type of results. They'll just be presented in the table a bit differently. Click on Statistics, click on Chi-Square. Now we want an estimate of effect size here, and in this case it's Kramer's V. So click on Phi and Kramer's V, click OK. And then you want to click on cells and click on expected counts because we want to see whether any of the expected cell frequencies are equal to one or less and row percentages. Click continue and click OK. And so here's the result I got. I got the table, first table, case processing summary, 30,000 observations. So it's a huge study in this, this is a fictitious case. Then we have our results here relevant to the descriptive statistics. And we can see that the click variable, whether they clicked on the ad or not, is no in the left column and yes on the right column. And far fewer people click on ads than don't. Most people do not click on ads. And that's why these observations are so high, 9,800, 9,700, 9,789. And on a percentage basis, that's 98.1, 97.4, 97.9. Only a minority of people have clicked on ads in this fictitious study. But for the ad selected based on whether an ad is trending or not, it was estimated at 1.9% click-through rate. Purchase ads were equal to 2.6%, so that's larger than, at least numerically, 1.9. And then ads presented on the web page based on search terms that the person used, 2.1%. And so the hypothesis here is, are these percentages equal to each other? Now, I could frame it in the context of no percentages. So is 98% the same as 97.4%? But in my opinion, it's better framed in this context because the company would be more interested on in whether people are clicking the ad. So the null hypothesis has been rejected with a Pearson chi-square value of 11.976, two degrees of freedom in this case, and p equal 0 0.003. And because the p-value is less than 0 0.05, we can reject the null hypothesis of equal percentages of click-through rates across the three types of ad selection methods. And finally, we have the Kramer's v-value, which is equal to phi in this case. And Kramer's v is equal to 0 0.02. It's not easy to interpret Kramer's v, as I've mentioned before. But I would say that the result is a very small one. There's a very small difference between the percentages. So the effect size is not big. But when you extrapolate that across, say, millions of web page views, then that could potentially add up to significant money for a company. And so that's why doing these type of analyses can be quite beneficial. And in this case here, the Pearson chi-square, which is a 2 by 3, stepped up to the plate and gave us an interesting result.